Well, hey folks, Amy from Colorado Mountain Living, and I'm kind of excited about this video. I'm going to be getting into something that I've never done before, so uh, it's going to be kind of a it's going to be kind of a learning experience for me, and hopefully for you guys as well. But uh, I've I've always been curious about hydroponics, but I've stayed away from it because it seems like a really complicated, uh, chemical scientific and expensive way to grow plants indoors. So I've kind of stayed away from it. It seemed like it needed a lot of specialized gear and it seemed like you would have to have uh, a certain level of knowledge of how to run your systems because it just seems like you'd have to be balancing your water with minerals all the time. So I've stayed away from it and it just seems like a lot more trouble than it's worth. But I actually came across a few videos online that really go into more detail about how you can get started with hydroponics really simply. So that's what I'm going to do in this video and in future videos. I'm going to compare two systems. One is the crack key method, which has to do with plants, the root system being partially exposed to oxygen. And then the DWC deep water culture method, which involves more of an aeration of the water instead of exposing those roots. So I, I've seen another video. Um, I think the person's name is Tico. I, I could put a link to her video, but um, she compares the two methods and um, has success even growing tomatoes inside. But I wanted to definitely bring this to you guys. I mean, I, it's, it's all new to me. I'd never heard of Cracky until I'd seen one of my friend's YouTube channels. Uh, I'll put a link to hers as well. Her, uh, it's the Mutiny Ranch. Her name is Lynn Benelli is doing a lot of really cool stuff over there of uh, growing indoors. And she introduced me to the crack key method. I didn't even know it was possible to grow lettuce in mason jars. But I'm going to take you through that. But you don't want to miss her channel, um, the Mutiny Ranch, on YouTube if you want to learn more about growing a lot of cool stuff indoors and living on the western slope in Colorado. So, okay, guys. So I'm going to show you the equipment that I got. So my big thing is that I didn't want to spend a lot of money. I was like, okay, you know, you can grow, start growing seedlings and get a lamp and all this stuff, but I, I don't want to spend hundreds of dollars just to grow lettuce. I'd rather just buy the lettuce. But uh, a lot of these things I already had, so that's why I'm giving it a whirl. So the crack key method, um, especially in Lynn's video, she shows how you can use mason jars to grow hydroponically. So I have a case of mason jars here. I'm so ready to get started. The DWC method, you use more of like a tub and you have to be able to have a pump that aerates the water. So right behind these mason jars, you can see I've got this Tupperware. It's about, uh, I think it's a two gallon Tupperware. So I'm gonna use this, not for the majority, I think just a couple of plants in here, but I'll try out the aeration method as well and be able to compare those side by side. So what did I have to buy? A couple of specialty things that go into hydroponics. One is, your feed. Uh, Fox Farm is recommended a lot in all the videos that I've seen and it's just a blend of nutrients for plants but you, you're not I thought you were gonna be pouring bottles of the stuff into the jars into the containers but apparently you, you, you just you're just using a few teaspoons per gallon of water and you know this apparently what I have could last I got, it was buy one get one free so this could last for seasons this was about $20, I think, for the two bottles. So plant nutrient, that's probably the most expensive purchase. But I've got years worth. So the air pump. Now, at first I wasn't going to do the deep water culture method, but I thought it would be more fun to compare. So this is, uh, it's a four watt, four liter per minute air pump. And it came with two air stones. If anyone's ever had an aquarium, they probably know what an air stone is. This is kind of like a pumice lava stone like a like a like a almost like an emery board sandy so the water just bubbles up through that so you get two of those you get your tubing and you get your attachments and your pump and that was about twenty dollars as well twenty four dollars so okay we're up to about the fifty dollar mark so the idea is that you take the mason jar you fill it up with water and then you put a little basket on top with your with your plant and seed so the little baskets, these are called net pots, and they fit over the top of the jar like that. And you fill the water all the way up, and hopefully the, the idea is that the plant sprouts. But you need, you need something to put the plant in. You're not using soil. So you, could, you just need to have something that's gonna stay moist. So rock wool is recommended for this job. 
and it kind of comes in a pack like this and you break them apart but I just learned that you don't break them apart by hand because they rip easily so you want to use a knife to cut these blocks out of, of the pack. So this is I, I just learned this because I didn't know what rock wool was, but apparently it's a manufactured form of a couple of minerals, basalt and dolomite, and they spin it into like a cotton candy and it makes a little uh, nest for your seeds to go into. There's little tiny holes right there where you can drop a seed or two and this is what's going to hold your plant for the rest of the time. I'm going to have to trim this a little bit, but you mash your rock wool into the basket, you put your plant, your seed in there, and rest it on top of the mason jar, fill it with water, and then you monitor it from that point. Now, the one risk with the Kratky method is that when you've got light on a container, your water inside can grow algae. So you wanna have, you, do, you wanna avoid the exposure of your water to light. So the recommendation is to cover this with either paint or paper so you're not getting light exposure into your jar. So that's another step I need to do is to coat to cover these in paper before I get my plant set up. And I just set up my light here. I'm, re, I'm using the Spider Farmer Grow, LED Grow Light. I did a review on this product last year when I got my seedlings started for the spring. I'm hoping to get another light set up over here so I can expand my corner. But this offers, when you turn it on, there's a big, you've got some infrared in there as well, and it has a dimmer switch so you can really crank up the brightness if you want to. Uh, this is really, really bright. And you can feel some heat from it as well. And you have adjustable pulley system so you can lower your light or raise it up as your plants grow. So really excited to get the Spider Farmer light going again. And I'm really excited to see what happens with the, the hydroponics because from the videos that I've seen, it only takes a month or two before you start seeing some real plant growth. Apparently it's more vigorous than seedlings that are started in soil. So that's my hope. And what I've got for seedlings, okay, I've got leftover. I didn't buy any seeds because I'm trying to keep the costs low. Romaine lettuce, spinach, kale, arugula, some homegrown cilantro seeds, I'm gonna try to do the tomato. This is a yellow pear tomato. So this is um, a smaller size tomato that might actually fruit. And we'll see what happens. Apparently tomatoes are really challenging to grow indoors. We'll see. We'll just start moderately and if it really takes off in a couple of months, then maybe I'll expand the operation. So this is my experiment. So now what I have to do is get everything set up. So first job is to cover my, cover my jars and cover my growing container. Got all my jars. Now I'm gonna get my baskets filled with the rock wool and then I'm gonna get the water ready. And then after that, I'm gonna set up my DWC tub, which is right here. I think. A little bit of room before it gets to the bottom but it's okay because the water is going to be filled up all the way to the top until the roots start to grow out from beneath it. So kind of smush it down a little bit. I actually have two more mason jars that are wide mouth mason jars so the two inch net pots don't really fit in there but I might um, just put a little clip on there to help them um, stay afloat. I have another idea for these two mason jars. Okay now I'm going to decide which seeds are going to go in which pots. So time to label the jars. All right, so let's go with spinach. I'm 
now I've got to figure out what I'm going to put in this tub. So that means I'm going to cut a hole in the top. I've got to cut holes in these, so I'm going to just measure out six holes. And then, since I'm tracing the outside, Uh, this is like one of those soldering knives, but you can get get it with a exacto point and it will heat up so it cuts through plastic really easily. So I'm like, okay, let's cut some holes. So this kind of slices through like like butter. Let that hang out a little bit and let me see if I. This one will work. Yeah, okay, so there's one. I think it's time to get the water going, put the seeds in. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is moisten the rock wool. So I'm gonna do that in the sink. And they kind of swell up a little bit. Wait, these are already pre-moistened before I fill my container. You don't need your nutrient just yet. You wait until you actually have plants sprouting out. So plain water is fine for now. So you really do want this to be filled to the brim so that the net pots are and the rock wool is wicking the water into the, you want to keep the rock wool moist. One more step. This is the DWC deep water culture method. This is the one that requires the aeration. So this is the air stone uh, connected the tubing to the pump. I'm just going to place this in the bottom. So, let me show you up close. You can actually see some of the water. See the water level right there? So it's in the cup itself. It's gonna stay plenty moist and we'll be on the lookout for sprouting. But, gotta put my seeds in first. So what am I gonna put in here? I think I'm gonna do kale, and they, I'm going to try the yellow tomatoes as well. I'm only going to put two seeds in per pot in case one seed is bad, but you don't want to overload. And these seeds are so tiny. There's You're not going to have really a lot of opportunity to be thinning the way you do in, in soil. So I probably need one big container like this just for a single tomato plant, but we'll just give it a try. Now I'm going to do the same thing for the crack key jars. Soak the wool and fill up the jars. We're all set for business so the last things to do are to turn on the lamp and to turn on the air pump so let me plug those in if I got any air coming out okay a little bit of air bubbles let me turn up the pump a little bit more now you can hear it okay there's our aeration so I'll put these back in all right guys, well that's the hydroponics video. So I, it's kind of exciting to do something brand new and I can't wait to show you the progress. I don't know if I'll do weekly progress or maybe every two weeks 
to sort of, I guess it depends on how exciting it is, but we're not gonna put on any of the nutrient yet until we start to get sprouting. So it might take a few days for sprouting. So anyhow, let me know if you guys have experimented with either of these methods, doing any hydroponics at home. Uh, but it seems like for a really low cost way of getting started, the crack key in the jars or a Tupperware container. And if you have an air pump, maybe you've had a, um, you, maybe you've had an aquarium, fish aquarium in the past and you already have one of these, but they're not very expensive to get one, uh, 20 bucks. So anyhow, low cost way to do some indoor growing and we'll see how it goes. We'll keep you posted. All right, guys, take care. See you next time.